recently I was uh, flipping channels on my TV uh, Saturday evening, and uh, it made me a little nostalgic for the uh, old uh, broadcast TV stations that I used to watch. And uh, this is a local TV guide uh, on the internet that you can look up. You type in your zip code, and it shows you what uh, is on in your broadcast area. Now, all these channels I don't actually receive on my antenna. Like this one here, 3.1, uh, is a low-power station. So I don't actually get retro TV, unfortunately, which has One Step Beyond, Ray Bradbury Theater, Doctor Who. But I can always get Doctor Who on Pluto TV, by the way, if you ever go there. Newsnet is a uh, 24-hour news channel. I do get news even, not Newsnet. There's Channel 4 and so on. So there's actually a lot. I get about 50 channels. Like I said, I don't get all of these ones. But uh, it's showing pretty much everything, you know, that including, you know, other states that are nearby. Uh, and mine is in the Detroit area. So it includes like Toledo, Ohio stations, like Channel 24, which I don't receive, unfortunately. But anyways, uh, so you can see there's a lot of stuff there. So it's not like I'm hard up for watching, uh, you know, stuff on TV. There is actually Channel 32, TV Ontario, which is interesting. Um, because that's a Canadian uh, station, so somewhat like a BBC type station or a PBS type station, um, which uh, was one of the first channels to uh, play Doctor Who in this uh, area, starting in the late 70s. And so on. So uh, it caused me to uh, dig out some of my old TV guides and decide to take a look at them. And uh, we'll take a look at those next. So here's my collection of TV Guide magazine. These are all the ones I have. Now the thing is, not all of these are actually TV Guide. So we'll talk about that here in a sec. Um, these ones here, um, it should, I, I should probably preface this by explaining that back in the day, um, you would go to the supermarket, and in the checkout aisles, they would have TV Guide magazine. Now, at the end of this video, I'll actually show you a clip inside a current supermarket. Actually, I took the video this morning and showing the current uh, issue of TV Guide magazine. So you'll be able to see what it was, what it's like now compared to back then. But um, now back then, see, this one was from 1980, April 1980. There's the date inside there. And this was only 40 cents for this thick issue. And they would have um, different editions based on the major cities. So this is the Detroit area. So for the local listings, they would have, um, you know, showing what each of the local uh, stations were playing. You know, it might not be too detailed on the, on the local aspect, but it would uh, it would be accurate to what you know this like this station here WKBD channel fifty uh, was an independent it is still a, uh, still around but it is an independent station I think now it's a CW station channel fifty but um, here's an ad for Jack Van Impe uh, which was a religious uh, program back then Jack Van Impe presents uh, he's passed away a few years ago. Um, but anyway, so it, it was accurate to uh, each city, you know. So, so that they must have went to a lot of trouble to make sure that each major market had its own edition of the TV Guide magazine. Now, in addition to that, say you didn't want to go to the store and buy a, 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 a TV Guide magazine, or if you didn't want to subscribe to it, what a lot of people did, they just used the one, the TV Guide, not actually TV Guide, but it's a TV Guide, uh, that came with the local newspaper. So my family subscribed to the Detroit News. And so television, this is from the 1984. It was called Television. That was their TV guide. And it was the same thing. It was produced by the uh, newspaper. I think newspapers probably had, you know, whatever service owned the newspaper, they would have it for all their newspapers, like different, different editions for different markets. But... um. <clears throat> 
So here is, let's see, for example, Sunday morning starts at 5 a.m. And you have Channel 62. Channel 62 back then in 1984 used to have a thing called All Night at the Movies. And it was like the one local station that didn't shut down at, you know, 3.30 in the morning or 2.30 in the morning. It went all night. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, anyways, this one here I bought at a bookstore. Probably has the price still in there for 75 cents. Maybe around 10 or so years ago. And... Uh, he had some other local TV guides. I got this one because I used to like that series called The Glory back then, which took place in the 1960s. Um, but uh, I remember the bookstore owner saying, why would anyone want TV guides, you know? And the thing is, the reason is, is because, at least the reason I was, um, you know, some people want them for uh, historical reasons. You know, they're doing research about what shows were around and so forth. But other people like me, just for nostalgic reasons, I'll look back at this and think, oh, I was uh, 13 years old back then. And what would I have watched, <clears throat> you know, on TV back then? So they, each day of the week, it would run from Sunday to Saturday. And each day of the week, they had these, you know, descriptions. This is Friday afternoon when you get home from school. You know, these are some of the shows that were on. This one is some music video shows on Channel 20, which is another independent station. Um, but uh, they also, have, for the primetime section, they would have a grid. So there's the grid showing the primetime. Now, nowadays, uh, when um, you look at TV Guide, they only have the grid, and it's only for the primetime. They don't have, in the current TV Guide magazine, they don't have these type of listings where like, for example, for the listing for the twilight zone on channel 50 at 11 o'clock, it gives a little description of the plot. So, you know, if you've seen it before or not, you know, so anyway, so, um, this is the oldest TVI thing I have. It says a special section you want to keep. And this is, uh, from January, 1964, they had this thing. It was, I guess uh, there was sort of a, a section in here where they talked about the the Kennedy assassination and the role that um, the television played in it. Now, the listings in this booklet are gone. So I think whoever, I got this at like a thrift store one time. So somebody tore out the listings and just kept this part. Like I said, this one is from 1980. I also bought this at a bookstore. I got this for 50 cents back then. It's bought the same day as that other one, I think. There's a funny thing here where... Um, is there a chance in the near future, near future that home video cassette recorders will be within the reach of the average family, say under $500? They probably won't get quite that low this year, but some may be as low as $600. So VCRs were around $500 or more back then, or actually more than $500 back in 1980s, which gives you an idea of you know how much things cost back then. So yeah, this is kind of a like I said, kind of nostalgic thing. There's PM magazine and you know tic tac tic tac toe. And again, like I said, a localized thing. So this is a local show. They have their own ads. So you know, there's uh, Michael Richards and Fridays, uh, ABC's uh, attempt at a Saturday Night Live type show. Lots of uh, stuff in here, which makes it really interesting. And like I said, this is the Detroit News version. This one I bought. Now, these ones I actually kept, uh, I think, by accident. This is from 1987. This is the very next week, November 1st, 1987. And this is like a week after that, uh, two weeks after that, uh, November 15th to 21st, 1987. I kept these by accident, I think. I just... Uh, <clears throat> they got shoved in a box or something. Then later I was like, oh, I'm going to keep these because they're interesting. You know, and <clears throat> you can look through and see what was on. One of the funny things I noticed is that Doctor Who was apparently on the air. Uh, see, You can see on Channel 32, Doctor, I mentioned TVO before, uh, Doctor Who was on the air. But uh, I didn't really watch Doctor Who back then. I didn't really start watching it regularly till. um 
1989, early 89. So there's the uh, Doctor Who, The Mark of the Ronnie, Part 3 of 4. TVO was playing the shows in episodic format. So the, the you know, actual 30-minute 30, 30 uh, episodes. Unlike on PBS later when I was watching it, it was in the feature format. They would just edit all the episodes together. And this one is coverless, so it's hard to see the date. Oh, this is actually the TV book. Um, so the Detroit Free Press was a competing newspaper, and uh, the Detroit Free Press, theirs was called the TV book. Now, in late 1989, December 89, uh, the Detroit Free Press and the Detroit News merged. They had a merger. So they're or at least on the sun, uh, Saturday and Sunday editions. The weekend editions, they put out a combined paper to save on costs or whatever. Um, they're still separate papers today, so I don't think they do that combination thing anymore. But um, I believe that meant we started now getting the TV book instead of TV uh, instead of television. See how this is the Detroit News, and then now it says the Detroit Free Press. So even though my family always subscribed to the news, not the Free Press, we started getting that because of the combined thing. Now, without the, uh, it doesn't have the year on here, but you can figure that out usually just by looking at the coupons and stuff. Uh, let's see, expires April 1990, it looks like. So you know that this is April 1990. Um, that's what year it is. And uh, let's see here, some of the shows that we're on. I think Doctor Who was on Channel 56 on Saturdays at this point. Uh, let's see. Not seeing it offhand here. But anyways, it gives you an idea of the kind of thing that uh, was on TV back then. Actually, I'm going to look on Sunday. Maybe it was on Sunday that the Doctor Who was on. Ba -da -ba -da. Cisco neighbor. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, at midnight on Sundays, this is 1990, Doctor Who, Remembrance of the Daleks. And it gives a little description of the show, which is pretty awesome. You know, like I said, they don't do that now. And this one is one that uh, I deliberately kept. Like I said, some of these other ones I think I just kept by accident. But this one I deliberately saved because uh, this was uh, about the debut of the Dark Shadows TV series in January 1991. So I had started watching it, and then about halfway through, it only ran about 13 episodes. By halfway through, I started taping it. But when it first appeared, I was like, oh, Dark Shadows. I had never really seen the original Dark Shadows at that point. But um, I thought this is something that I'd be interested in. This was even before my interest in, you know, gothic romance or romance in general. You know, it was just seemed like a cool, spooky show, a, you know, cult TV show. So I kept that, and there's a thing about it. There it shows the various channels in the area. So, you know, similar in that sense to the, the website stuff that you can find now, where... Um, you know, it, it lists what's on, but like I said, it seems much more detailed. You know, if you're looking just for what time it is, you can kind of see what shows, you know, are there. And just usually not just the name of the show, but often there'll be like a little description of what it is. Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, and it doesn't have, usually they'd have a little asterisk if it's a rerun. So this might have been a first broadcast. I don't know. Data's day. There's a Dracula TV series. Upstairs, downstairs ad on the local PBS station. There's another Doctor Who channel. Channel 32 having a episode of Doctor Who. So it's pretty cool. You know, back then you were able to watch Doctor Who and various uh, things. So here's the Dark Shadows world premiere event. Um, 
So in a way, like I said, it's almost like a, a form of time travel. You know, you can um, uh, go back and see what was on TV back then. And in a way, it's like, you know, you can kind of imagine what it might have been like to um, to have been around back then and watching them. Let's see how Saturday and Sunday would often have like the interesting uh, TV shows and movies and stuff. Uh, let's see what a Friday night looks like. So some of the stuff is coming in way early in the morning, like Father Knows Best at 5 a.m. Because nowadays you would have that on like antenna TV. Friday night videos on Channel 4. That's the NBC affiliate. Romance Theater, Channel 62. I wonder what that is. And it's only a half hour show, it looks like. So I wonder what Romance Theater was. Huh. So anyways. Let's see here. And then there's just another one for 1991. And we stopped getting the paper, I think around 95. Um... So uh, anyways, here's some examples of the TV guide that you'd buy in the uh, store in the 1990s. It says on the uh, spine here, January 1993. And I think I might have got this at a thrift store or something. This, back then, the cover price was only 89 cents, but it was really thick. And again, you had the same sort of more detailed listings, you know. Um. Get an idea of some of the. Uh, there's the Sarah Polly Rom, Roma, uh, Ramona series that uh, was on back then. And again, here's their grid. But this is just for the prime time. Like I said, nowadays they just have the uh, stuff for the prime time. And this was when Bill Clinton was being inaugurated. So only 89 cents. This again, uh, February 1994, cover price still only 89 cents. And again, you have all those detailed listings. Uh, this was a Star Trek Voyager um, issue, or a cover anyway, uh, 1995. This came out in, uh, I believe, four different editions, four different covers, I think. And of course, I bought this one with... Uh, has a Neelix on the front. Um, but again, you had all these all these listings. There's the grid for Tuesday evening. And again, you had all this detailed stuff. And it's all specific to the Detroit area. I actually have two copies of this one. This is when the Beatles anthology came out. So I think I bought two of them just to keep one of them. This is November 1995. And we'll set that here. And again, still had, you know, the, uh, whoa, someone's kind of breaking. You know, still all those detailed listings. And this one uh, from 1996. And the cover price is 99 cents still. Can you imagine a buying a, a book, a magazine this thick, came out every week, only 99 cents. This one, not only does it have uh, Terry Hatcher in it, but there's a comic strip in here too. There's Terry Hatcher. It's a more, even more detailed article than you would see now, I think. And now nowadays the focus is much more on articles and stuff. So this is a... Um, uh, Hercules comic strip uh, written by Roy Thomas. And uh, an exclusive five page comic strip with Xena in there, too. So, pretty cool. Like I said, for only 99 cents. Now, the price did go up the following year, 1997. I think this is the most recent issue of TV Guide that I have. And the price was a whopping $1.19. And 
you have an exclusive Stephen King story in here with a cover art by Bernie Wrightson. And let's see here. And after some of the articles, there should be the Stephen King thing in here. Article, there we go. The short story by Stephen King with a illustration by Bernie Wrightson. Illustrations by Bernie Wrightson for TV Guide. So it's like an exclusive story continues immediately following family pages. So I think there's the story. It continues over there. It goes on for quite a bit. So the original Stephen King short story. Some more illustrations. And then you have the TV Guide thing. So again... <clears throat> Uh, you know, you have your your grid for the prime time, and then you also have the you know specific uh, detailed listings for your more per, your particular market. Mass writer uh, TV series there, Cayman writer. Jenny Jones, Scheduled Topic, Interracial Relationships. Um, so, you know, it gives us a more detailed idea other than just the grid of what's on. And see, they say what's on each channel. It just doesn't say local programming. Uh, so what we're going to take a look at now uh, after this is the um, a current TV guide at the store. Uh, and video I shot inside the uh, supermarket today. And you'll be able to see how it compares to these uh, these older issues, which I feel are much more charming, much more interesting, and more affordable. It makes more sense to spend, you know, between 40 cents in 1980, because that was the cover price, 40 cents in 1980, and $1.19 in 1997. So 17 years later, you know, it was from four. So you'll see with this new issue, cover price a lot more than that. Anyway, stick around for that, and then that will be the uh, end of my look at TV Guide magazine. As a follow-up, here's what a current issue of TV Guide looks like. And you can see there the... Well, actually, this isn't that current. This is... I'm recording this on December 5th, 2022, but it's showing that this covers the week from November 7th to 20th. So this is actually an old issue. But uh, the cover price there is $5.99. But it's very thin. And everything is in grid form. So when it shows local programming, that's all it says. It doesn't say what it actually is. And usually that local programming is news. But see, you can see it's not very descriptive. It's just all in grid form. It's more like a magazine rather than a listings. So that's what it's like now. Very thin. There's a subscriptive thing there. But yeah, so not really the bargain that it used to be. Even in the 90s when it was only like a dollar or so. Now it's six bucks. Anyway, so that's just a point of comparison.